It's a Curry Cup podcast, and it's time we do almost end the season. We're getting to, to the to the business end of it now. The semi-finals have been done last week, and this week it's the final. And I thought it a good idea to speak to Clinton on behalf of the Lions and Belinda on behalf of the Sharks. Uh, and I let them, you know, I'm going to let them go at each other just now. But firstly, welcome here, and uh, Clinton. Let's start with you. Your your semi-final against Titus. Uh, you guys won. But you let in a lot of tries, and the teachers gave you a bit of a fright there. That wasn't the most convincing semi final than I've ever seen. Your thoughts? Evening, Envia. Evening, Belinda. Yeah, no, absolutely, uh, Envia. Um, it was an eye opener, like I said this week. Um, it's probably the perfect uh, preparation for the Lions to go into a final. Had it been an easy game, we might not have, mm-hmm. you know, we would not have had errors in our game exposed that we need to work on. So, um, I was having, having a look at the stats earlier. We scored 68 tries this season. We conceded 37, um, which means we conceded in 11 games just on about 3.4. But in this game alone, we conceded six. So, yeah, the cheaters were all over us like a rash. Um, when it was 14-0 down, uh, I, I I know the Lions are good at coming back, but I was concerned because I thought, geez, this whole season is going to now just implode. Um, but, yeah. Definitely, there's uh, areas to work on this this week. Um, discipline is one of those. I mean, Marius Lowe, rate him highly. Good captain, good player, but he has those moments in games. He did it once in the, in the URC as well, and it's costly. So, um, I'm sure Belinda will have more to say about the Sharks' yellow cards. But, yeah, no, obviously, it's just um, – it's a game that I think the Lions needed to really open up their eyes and things to work on for this final. And Belinda, you and I were at Loftus together. I even paid for your beer. Jeez. And you repaid me by <laughs> kicking my team's butt. I mean, I wasn't too happy about that. <laughs> and I mean, But I was nice I, about it, at least. Yeah, you were gracious about it. But I mean, it was a bit of a sarcastic grace, I would think. No, it wasn't... Uh, I'm kidding. No, I, I just... I was so upset about that we couldn't put away a, a Sharks team with 12 players on the field completely dominant in all of the uh, tight uh, aspects of, of the game, the scrums, the scrums, the lineouts. We just, but we couldn't put it away. What What was your thoughts on that yeah. game? Yeah, I mean, I honestly, the first half I was very concerned. I did not think that we were going to be the ones to progress. It looked as if you guys were really dominating. Um, but I have to say, hats off. To Joey Mongolo and the other coaches, what a defensive effort. I mean, discipline obviously was a massive issue for us, but the defensive effort of that team to hold the Bulls at bay at Loftus when they were down to 12 men like is unbelievable because the Bulls didn't score against them while they were down to 12 at all. They just weren't able to capitalize. Um, and But I think more than that was also just this – like never say die attitude from them. It's I was so impressed with the fact that they didn't let the heads drop. They were so determined to keep fighting even into extra time, <laughs> which was, I think, brutal. But anyway, um, and so yeah, I'm I'm very proud of them. You know, I think I think they they had such a rocky start to the season and they they can be very proud of what they did in that game. I was I was very impressed. Linton, you guys, um, you were talking about uh, Altman Oller saying that they want to play the the full URC team this weekend to make sure that they they, they win this time. And I just read an article now, just before we came on on Supersport, that said this whole uh, postponement of the URC uh, for the South African teams was driven by the Lions. The Sharks, the Bulls, and the, the Stormers were quite happy to start this weekend, but the Lions were the ones that agitated for this thing to, to be postponed. So are you expecting a full-strength URC side? What do you think of the fact that the Lions were driving this? Do, do they not, did they not um, actually make it a bit more difficult for themselves because they're now having to face a full-strength shark side? Because it would have been the, the opening game of the URC, the Sharks versus the Lions. And now instead of a URC game, it's a Curry Cup final, a little bit of a, of a different animal. Yeah, no, definitely. Uh, uh, what I've heard is, is that um, obviously we weren't sure what kind of team they were going to put in against the Cheetahs. Because they, they were playing with that Curry Cup side the whole season, barring the team uh, that they put on the field um, against you guys in midstream, against the Bulls. Um, then they reverted back to the Curry Cup side. And 
obviously they brought in the experience against the cheaters in this because they knew that uh, you know, we, we have to progress. Not that they didn't put any trust in the guys that have brought them this far, but obviously in a, in a knockout game, you want that kind of experience just to guide you and, and bring you through. Um, so what I've heard is, is that it's going to probably be very much the same team that played against the Cheetahs. There might be a tweak here and there. I don't want to let too much out of the bag here because I've got the opposition on mm. tonight as well. <laughs> but... Um, yeah, no, I heard they're going to go very much the same because they don't want to, again, uh, break momentum going into a final. Um, and there might be a tweak here or there. Well, Belinda, you guys, uh, well, you scored six. The reason why you, you, you went to the, through to the final is because you scored the most tries in that match, even though it was a draw. You scored six tries. Do you see the Lions letting in all those tries against the Cheetahs as being a bit vulnerable, maybe? Maybe you, you guys have an opportunity on, on attack, and I'll talk about defense just now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think so. I think um, it's the one place where the Sharks have been doing well the whole season, right? It's kind of their attack has definitely been a lot better than their defensive efforts, except for this game. Um, and so I think it could be it could be a weakness and it could be an opportunity. That being said, I mean, it was a high scoring game and all the games of the Curry Cup. Mm -hmm. We've chatted about this a lot in the past. All the games of the Curry Cup have been quite high scoring. Um, but I think it is an opportunity for them and one that they'll try and capitalize on. Yeah. And then your defense, Joey Mugola, you just mentioned him. Your defense was outstanding. I mean, you should actually just start the game with 12 players because then you obviously grow an arm and a leg. And then you bring on a, like a nine or a 11 player bench, something like that, because that will make that will make a difference. Who says you have to start with 15 players? Clinton, do you think huh? you're up to that? <laughs> yeah, that could be quite something. Eh? <laughs> yeah, look, I mean, um, just coming into this part here now as well. Um, yeah, the Sharks defense have been uh, has been outstanding. I mean, keeping a Bulls team out like that in that game with 12 players, I mean, that Volker Dunbord. And um, the Lions have improved in their defensive uh, patterns and their defensive lines. This game, however, was, yeah, I don't know, they just were leaking tries. Uh, uh, it was like a revolving door. They came right in the second half in that, but yeah, they'll be very concerned about what happened there. And we left to be at our best to keep the Sharks out when they start attacking. Yeah, the thing is now, it's one thing to play against the Cheetahs because they don't have depth. So they can give you a bit of a go, but they're going to run out of gas. But the Sharks is a different animal altogether. They've got depth. They've got Andre Estes in that team. Just that man alone is, is basically worth two you know, two on your own side. So do you reckon you guys can 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 stand up to the, the physicality of the Sharks team? I mean, I know you guys pride yourself on your own physicality, but this Sharks team seems to be, I don't want to say it, but they, they're sort of next level, don't you think? No, they are. Yeah, I mean, the physicality they showed in that game was definitely next level. And they just don't go away. They're in your face the whole time. I think the one thing that could possibly count in, in the Lions' favour was the fact that the Sharks came through a grueling semi-final of 100-plus minutes. Mm. And that will take it out on any player. A week is a short period between two games like that. And... They might just come into this game a little bit flatter because of that semi-final than the Lions were. Uh, than the Lions will. I mean, um, so the Lions have got to um, match them in those first 20, 30 minutes, I feel, because they're going to come with it. Um, they're going to be brutal in their forward play, breakdowns and that kind of thing. So the Lions are going to have to stand up to the fight. And then hopefully as the game progresses, um, and the so-called altitude kicks in, we can open up and play our normal running game and get in some good trials there. But um, we're going to be in a big fight for 30, 40 minutes of that game, and then anything can happen in the second half. Linda, your coach, yeah. the esteemed John Huntley, <laughs> and I asked him this question, yes. and uh, a couple of questions about the squad size and everything, but he, he, he was on about the fact that you know, maybe winning this the semi-final or Gavin earning the right didn't win it they earned the right to go to the final let's, let's not be <laughs> let's put it like that maybe it was not such a good thing maybe they would have been better to lose because again I think it upset their planning to a large degree he said for example that under Estreisen who was supposed to be out for another two or three months from what Rossi was telling us he was supposed to play 50 minutes this week and now with the extra time, he's now in 50 minutes this week and 50 minutes in the final. But now with the extra time, he played 100 minutes in one game. Now he has to come back and play a final 
with that same body, basically, if you're, if you're getting at, do you, like Linda just referred yeah. to, do you think the, the, the Sharks are up to it? Because he seemed to me a bit defeatist, if, if I could use that word. Like, he's, I don't know. And now getting, getting back to the fact that the Lions requested the URC to be postponed. Do you think the Sharks, yeah. maybe this is a bridge too far for them? Um, firstly, I think John is maybe being just a tiny bit disingenuous. <laughs> I think, uh, I don't think they don't believe that they deserve to be there or that they should have gone through or that they want to be there. Let me rather put it that way. I think there's no team who plays in a semi final thinking, we don't really want to make it to the final. Of course, they want it to be in the final. As much as it complicates things in terms of the URC, of course, they want it to be in the final. And of course, they want to win the final. No one's going to go to the Curry Cup final thinking, eh, we don't really mm. care one way or another. You know, it's like they want to win. Um, the extra time is a big concern for me. It's And it wasn't, it's not just the extra time. It was that whole game was brutal. Like it was really physical. There was a lot of players down at various stages during the game, like lots of blood, lots of um, injuries, broken noses on your guys' side. So, mm. you know, it's just, it was a very, Brady Davids came off with a mouthful of blood. I don't know what happened there, but so it was a very physical game. It wasn't just that it was long. It was really physical. Um, so I'm a bit worried about that. Also because we were even going into that game, I think in the team release last week, we had a list of like, 18 players on the injuries and recoveries list so which is really i must just say this it's very cool that the sharks include that on their team sheet every week on yeah. social media yeah. i love that um because otherwise people are asking all the time why isn't this person playing why isn't that person playing so i think it's really it's a really great um effort from them but so we have depth but I am worried about about the toll on their bodies. That being said, I mean, in terms of acclimation to altitude, well, we just played 100 minutes at altitude. Mm. I think we're pretty acclimatized at this point. Um, it may it may come back to bite us in the game on Saturday, but I think... But you're going home, aren't you? <laughs> and then coming back. You have to acclimatize again. I mean, I don't know. Like, I have my, I have my questions about the whole altitude thing yes obviously it has an impact but is the impact as much as it used to be all these players are playing all over the place mm. all the time it's not as if they've never played at Loftus or they've never played at Ellis Park before of course they have so I don't know I think it has an impact but I don't think it's as significant as as of course when you're playing 100 minutes yeah people were tired but the Bulls players were tired too by the end of that 100 mm. minutes I mean just a long physical game um so yeah, I mean, I think I think the bigger thing and the thing that will stand us in really good stead on on Saturday is that they obviously have a lot of belief in themselves and in the team and a, a almost that like backs to the wall rugby that we talk about with the Springboks and when they're underdogs and why they perform better when they're underdogs, um, and I think that served them well on Saturday and I think it will continue to serve them well. Well, I want to ask Linton just now, but I want to first ask your opinion. You guys really suffered in the scrums, for example, the set pieces. Lineups, not so much. You you guys were quite good in the lineups. But the scrums, I mean, if the Bulls, the, the Bulls were caught out by you guys reversing so quickly that they didn't have time to control the ball properly. Otherwise, it would have been a try yeah. or a penalty try for that matter. You guys just disintegrated. So, and you know, Arsenalti and Klabokanya is there, for example. That uh, Lions uh, scrum is impressive. It's imposing. Your, your chances, do you think, in terms of, of that side of the game? I think you're in for a bit of a, a tough time on Saturday. Yeah, I think it's something they're definitely going to have to work on this week. It's probably going to be a focus area because the scrums weren't good. Um, and that's, you know, in South Africa, we like to pride ourselves on the scrum, right? Mm. That's that's something yeah, that sure. every team wants to be strong in. Um, and it's certainly something that hasn't been a significant weakness over the course of the season. So I'm not really sure what was going wrong there on Saturday. And it's something that they, they're going to have to take a look at because, yeah, the Lions are not going to um, let us get away with that. That's for sure. Well, Clinton, she, she doesn't know what went wrong. I mean, I can tell you, you played against Volku <laughs> <laughs> It's not that difficult. So you're talking about the, the Lions front row, for example. What do you think your chances are, especially in the scrums? I mean, you guys have been imposing. You've been one of your strong points. Um, the scrums is the Scurry Cup season and the Club of Kanye coming back and the likes. You're, what do you think of that? 
Yeah, no, the Lions, just like Linda says, South Africans pride themselves in scrumming, and that is one of the things the Lions have definitely been priding themselves in. And when you've got 153 kilogram tight head prop, who I've heard in the last two days has been pushing the teams that they've been training back, uh, training against back meters. Yeah, look, it's, it's obviously an area where Julian Redways has been working hard with our, with our front row and our scrums, and that is definitely the platform they're going to use to launch attacks from. Obviously, our lineouts have been good. We also had the miss, odd game where we misfired. But I think over the course of the season, we've we've done well in our lineouts. Um, but our scrums are definitely an area where we feel we can push most teams in the competition. So, yeah, I still think the Sharks are going to come at us with their forwards and their physicality. But I think the Lions have got a, a trick up their sleeve there in that forward pack. And uh, hopefully we'll get some penalties in this guys. Well, Clinton, the one game you guys did lose this year was against the Sharks at Alice Park. I mean, it was on the same teams, the same players. But I mean, it, it does it does it does have to mean something, don't you think? Yeah, like you say, this is that's the only game we lost, and against the very same opposition. Um, people in Lions Country would want to believe that the reason why we lost that game, obviously, the Sharks were better than us on the day. But one of the reasons why I think we came short that day was is we veered off from our normal game plan. Um, the Lions are known to be good with ball in hand. And they've done that in every game this season, hence the 68 tries. However, against the Sharks that day, they, they took like the launch to their own hands and they were kicking away a lot of possession and it was it was detrimental to us. So I remember Nkosi and even Cash and them after that game said they were pulling their hair out because the players completely veered off the game plan and they were trying to play this kick and chase game and it wasn't an instruction from the coaches and it backfired. So they re they, they reverted back to their normal ball in hand game and I mean, the rest is history. So yeah, look, it's it's the only team we've lost against and none of us are having like, um, we're not overconfident at all. This is going to be one hell of a final. We're going to have to be at our... We're going to have to be like better than our best on Saturday mm. to, to keep the shock side out. Herbal Iceman Cooling Gel. The secret player on the rugby field. Melinda, I, I, I did some research now because I went back and listened to what Peewee was telling me sort of sub, you know, subconsciously almost. And, and then I picked up what Willem mm -hmm. Strauss from the Bulls was trying to communicate with WhatsApps. And I said, the Bulls are trying to send a message here. And I think the message is the following. The Sharks and the Lions played their last UFC game on the 1st of June. And the Bulls played three games after that, one being a quarterfinal against Benenden, one being a semifinal against Leinster, and then one being a final against Glasgow. And then all those players had to go do their eight-week consecutive race mm -hmm. period, and they actually then had to lose a lot of players to the Springboks, which also upset them. And then the Lions, through their agitation, Clinton, nudge, nudge, wink, wink, managed to postpone the UFC start. So I think the Bulls were caught out a bit short in terms of their planning. We say always, you know, Oh, particularly the minutes are planned and the meters are planned and GPS data and everything else. Do you not agree maybe that the, I know you're not a Bulls fan, either of you, either of you are Bulls fans, but that maybe the Bulls were caught, caught out a bit short about this by this uh, changing of the URC uh, season starting for the South African teams, but I know. Yeah, it certainly seems that way. And I think, you know, I think maybe this is the one place where the fact that the Sharks have been struggling in the URC because of having so many Springboks has actually worked in their favor at this point because they've gotten used to having to adapt um, and having to make a plan for not having all the players that they want to have and and having to build that depth. Um, and so I think maybe the Bulls didn't have that level of planning of all that experience. I mean, they should have, but it just seems as if they didn't have that um, planning in place. I don't know that John was thrilled about the, um, about the URC moving mm -hmm. either. He, I think the only person who, who was excited about the, the Curry Cup, like being seen as a more prestigious competition again was Joey and, and probably JP as well. And and I think JP has done a fantastic job as well. Mm. I shouldn't, I shouldn't just be giving credit to Joey. Um, but I think, yeah, I think the Bulls really, they did, they, 
they seem to have fallen short in their planning. Um, and I don't have the inside information into mm -hmm. their systems that you do, but it does seem as if they they came up short on that front and and it and it cost them on Saturday because they really should have been able to put that Sharks team away as much as I would have hated that. They should have been able to beat the Sharks when they were down to 12. No, sure. I think, let me tell you what I think, is that um, that eight-week consecutive resting is a problem. Because um, mm -hmm. the moment you interrupt an eight-week rest, the eight-week starts again. This has to be eight weeks consecutively. So now you have you, you started your, your layoff later than you guys after three very intense yeah. physical games. Those are, those are tough games. You can't deny that. And then having to start them playing sooner than you wanted to. So I don't know how many of these players, eight weeks consecutive rest have been interrupted. Because again, Willem Strauss hinted at maybe it might bite these teams, all of us, but mostly I suppose he's talking about yeah. the Bulls, towards the end of the season yeah. where some of these players might have to be rested. Like Dijon Carr didn't rest in the mm -hmm. Curry Cup. He played the Curry Cup. So he, he's not going to have to go to, take an eight-week rest somewhere. Yeah. Now, how many of these other players have we brought in earlier? And this, I think, applies to the Sharks as well, to a degree, yeah. Are, yeah. are now having to go rest somewhere else where they were planned for. They were planning to get them some rest here, but they'll have to do it later. I think it's going to come back yeah. us all in the backside. It was the fact that I think the USC starting on the same as the Karika final was a lapse in planning from SA rugby side. Yeah. Yeah, I think um, from the conversations that I had with, with Joey and with Neil, it seemed as if they were always planning to bring at least some of their URC players into the Curry Cup towards the business end of the competition, obviously assuming that they made it that far. Um, which let's be honest, right at the beginning, nobody expected this. <laughs> um, mm. So I think that was always a factor in their planning, but certainly, you know, the eight weeks of consecutive rest and probably having to bring more URC players than they anticipated because of all the injuries. I think that you're right. It is going to come back to bite us all at the end of the season. I'm a big proponent of player welfare, as you know, so I think the players do need rest. Is it is eight weeks consecutive rest when we're playing in so many different competitions feasible? I don't know, but but we can't compromise the welfare. So I think we have to look at like how do we structure the competitions? I don't know. It's very difficult. Yeah. We've had this conversation. It's really very difficult. Lyndon, I asked John Plumtree the same question because Spiro said to me the same thing. You have 56 players, now apparently it's 57 players. The, how, do you, how many Springboks do the Sharks have? Probably 10 or 15, I'm not even sure. 10, 12, I think. Minus your injuries, you said, how many did you say? The Bulls had 34 players available to select from for the final. But the Lions do not have that problem because they only had a couple of, of Springboks that were not available, if I can call it that, Kuyan Horn, uh, Morne van der Berg and uh, Ruan Fenter. And Morne van der Berg is the only player who actually was, looks like he was flown over to South America for a bit of a holiday because he's not in the squad or in the team or on the bench or anyway. But the point is, um, Clinton, you guys seem to be pretty well said and Belinda referred to planning. Looks to me like the Lions that this the whole thing sus the best. I mean, they just started off the Curry Cup squad, switched over almost seamlessly to cash and then taking over and started to bring the URC players back. I want to call it again seamlessly. You guys seem to have planned this quite well. Yeah, um, you've nailed it there. Um, and the, the thing is, the fact that the Lions didn't have to, you know, like sacrifice a lot of teams in the Springbok squad and that gave them a better uh, preseason, if you like. You know, they, did, they had a lot of they had little disruptions. So they started off with a very uh, promising and exciting Curry Cup side. And against the Bulls in midstream, they felt, you know what? We, we're doing well. Let's just give our guys a run against the Bulls because that's probably going to be the only game that they're going to be able to play before the URC starts. Um, and that's exactly what they did. So they had very little disruptions compared to the other unions for the pure fact that we didn't have spring bucks that were pulled up. Yes, here and there we had an Edwolf on a mud where they played against Wales or Portugal. We had Ron Fenter that played in the one game, Kieran Horn, Krapi, Krapi and that kind of thing. But it didn't disrupt the lines in any big way. And it actually just added to, 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 you know, to bring those guys back when they're back to the Springboks, coming back to the Lions, and it added a lot of value to the Lions in the Curry Cup. So I think we've had a, probably the easiest of the, of the different teams to prepare for the Curry Cup, now the final, and then at the same time give some of our players a run before the URC starts. 
Yeah, but I think it, it, it just didn't just happen that way. It was planned that way. And that, to me, is the no, thing no. that stands out. No, for sure. that's They did. I mean, from the beginning of this season or towards the end of last season, they obviously realized we're going to have to approach this new Curry Cup season differently, the URC differently. So, And in all the training sessions, all the coaches in the union were involved. So obviously you'd have your rocking force, your vessel roof, uh, Vainant Ellis coaching the Curry Cup side, but very close to them were the likes of Cash, Julian Redling Hayes, Ricardo Lopes. Mm. So there's like a, it's almost like a blueprint of the lines now where everyone is uh, singing off the same song sheet and everybody's on the same page. So the way they're playing the under 19s, under 21s, the Curry Cup, as well as URC, it's, it's almost like the same, you know, the same thing. So when a, a player moves from and under 21 to the Curry Cup side, and from the Curry Cup to the URC side, it's a seamless transition. So, no, no, I think there was a lot of planning that went into this, and I think the Lions are just thrilled that the URC game against the Sox was moved so that we can put our full focus into this Curry Cup right. in the final. I saw today you said that you guys are expecting a, a, a nice crowd, for example. Where, what do you know? You, you're close to the Lions. So what, what's, what's the rumors like? Are we going to see a full house or at least some people in Alice Park or what? Yeah, so I've been chatting to the marketing at the Lions and obviously my buddy in the ticket office and I'm saying, come guys, what's happening, what's happening? Um, so by close of business today, I think we look, we're look looking at about 25,000 that's already been sold. Um, and it's not bad for two days of the ticket office being open and obviously the online ticket sales. Um, I think they're hoping to get close to 40,000 come game day, um, which will be a great turnout uh, seeing as though Ellis Park has been empty for a very long time, barring the Springbok test against the All Blacks. So, yeah, they're hoping for at least a 40,000 turnout. And I heard that there's a lot of Shark supporters in Joburg. There's a big contingent of Shark mm. supporters in Joburg. So, a lot of that 40,000 is going to be from Sharks, Shark supporters. So, yeah, I mean, there's nothing, I've said this to you before, there's very few stadiums that I've been to that, com that can compare to an Ellis Park that's close to capacity or full when it comes to fears. It's the way it's built. It's just the way it keeps mm. the sound in the atmosphere. It's just next level. Belinda, that was one of the most upsetting things for me last Saturday at Loftus. Where I was sitting, I was surrounded by more sharks than bulls. It's, at some stage, it felt like there were more shark supporters on in the stadium than <laughs> there were bull supporters. Yeah, I must say there was an impressive turnout of sharks fans, but we are everywhere. Um, mm. <laughs> there was where I was sitting. There was a good mix. In fact, there was even some Lions fans there who had... And Stormers. I mean, real and Stormers. They were a bit lost, I think. But shame, what else did they have to watch? Bless them. Yeah, too. Um, <laughs> they, the, um, the Lions guys, though, that were there supporting, they showed real commitment because they were at Ellis Park and then obviously watched their semifinal and then came through to Loftus. So they were a little bit late. Um and okay. a lot um, inebriated. <laughs> but yeah. yeah, so there was a good mix of, of fans where I was sitting. That's quite exciting. I like the fact that uh, the, 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 the supporters are basically a good mix of everybody. That makes it a bit more enjoyable. I, I must be honest, I didn't enjoy that, especially when we were losing or not winning. Let me, we didn't lose. We did not, we just didn't win. There's a difference. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now let's put your, put your money where your mouth is. What do you expect? Who's going to take the, the title this year? Yeah. When have I ever been objective? Um, <laughs> obviously, I think the Sharks are going to win. I don't think it will be easy. Um, it's more It's more. I really want the Sharks to win. Um, but yeah, I think they can do it. I think they've got the, the belief it will be tough um, playing at Ellis Park, playing away from home again. But I think they can do it. I think it will probably be a close game. Hopefully not a draw. Hopefully no extra time. Mm. But I think... I think it'll probably be another close game. And you, Clinton? Yeah, I know. I think Lions country has been starved of silverware for far too long now. Um, this team is fired up. There's a very good vibe in the camp. Um, there's self-belief. They're, they're setting very high goals this season, even in the URC. And you know what? I just think that this Cheetahs game exposed some weaknesses that we can look mm. at and that we have been working on. And I believe this, it's going to be a very, very tough first half. But I believe the Lions will unleash their backs in that second half. And it might just be too much for the Sharks who have 
come out of a semi-final that was mm-hmm. a war. And it's never easy, I think, for any coastal side to, you know, perform at that level back to back at the high felt. Um, so I'm going with the Lions for a win. Uh, I predict between a five to eight point victory. But I do think that if San Eliano Hamba, a lot of people are saying they hope he starts, but I think we might have Cade starting. But I think if San Elia comes on, he's a magician. Mm-hmm. I think he can turn that game for the Lions in the last 20. Well, Clinton, you'll be happy to hear that I'm going to be supporting the Lions this weekend. <laughs> not That's that my good. man. <laughs> now you convinced me, like I said, yours, you guys are the teams I support after the Bulls. Way after the Bulls. But anyway, that's still my second choice. So, yeah, I'm happy. I think it's going to be a tight game. I think the Sharks are going to run out of steam, I'll be honest. And I think the Lions have, have done their homework. They're well prepared. So, I, I, I see the, the Lions beating. And I think it's going to be fairly comfortable. I think it's going to be more than 10 points. They're going to beat the Sharks by more than 10 points. Not too bad. Oh, that we'd, we'd be delighted if that's the case. I mean, I think even if we... This is a cliche now, but even if we won by one point, like we did against the teams in the World Cup, the Lions will be delighted. Just to lift that Curry Cup aloft again for the first time in nine years is going to be such a big boost for this union. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, we've been the laughing stock for a while now. It's time to show our worth. Yeah, I mean, obviously I live in Joburg, so when the Lions are not playing the Sharks, I support them, but definitely not on Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think, yeah, I think, I think this Sharks team has really showed such metal and such courage to come back from an abysmal start to the season. And they've been very strategic in terms of this mixture of like Mm -hmm. young players and experienced players that like span of experienced players like Lionel Cronier and so on. Um, And so I think those experienced players are going to help them carry it over the line, I think, because they've been there before. They've done this before. They know what you need to to win the big games. So hopefully that's what will happen on Saturday. All right. Thanks for that. I appreciate it. Next week we'll do a bit of a post-mortem. And one of you two are going to be um, not as happy as the other one. <laughs> so we'll see how that ended. Clinton, keep us posted about the 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 attendance, man. I'd like to see mm-hmm. I'd, I'd like to see a nice full house. Just let us know what you know is on Facebook or wherever. But uh, I'll 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 spread the word myself. Yeah, now I'll, I'll keep you guys updated on social. I'll I'm onto the ticket office like regularly and getting some info from the marketing guys. And yeah, it, it needs to it needs to be a full house or close to a full house. It's, mm-hmm. I think first of all, the Lions deserve their supporters to be there. You know, in numbers. Uh, especially after the rugby they've been dishing up. Uh, but besides that, I mean, anybody that's coming to the final, the Sharks, I think we just need to host an incredible final and it just needs yeah. to be like fierce on the next level. Yes. So okay. when I went online on um, Monday morning, as soon as the tickets went on sale, I saw it was already, I mean, it was selling out quickly because I booked my tickets on the like grandstand side and there was a lot of sections that had barely any seats left available in them already at like 10 past eight on, on Monday morning. So people are keen. Um, I'm really looking forward to it. Bizarrely, it's the first Curry Cup final I've ever been to. I went to a World Cup final, but not a Curry Cup final. Very random. Um, but I would be super keen to know whether or not they're going to put on the same kind of like transport options. Obviously not at the same level as for the Springbok game, but that mm. really made it so nice for people traveling to the game to be able to do park and ride and i mean i don't think we have to get into the reasons why people mm. um don't always go to want to go to ellis park you know me i am always there regardless but i'm a diehard fan of the park and ride so i'd be keen to know if they're planning on doing things like that again because i think it would that would really help to get a full house because if people know they can get there and back safely Mm. Um, they'll feel better about coming through. Linton, you must find out first. Um, I, I also, well, Johan asked us about that specifically. Johan Jordan, a Blue Bulls friend. Mm-hmm. He wanted to go, but he wasn't sure about the parking and, it's, you know, is it's, mm-hmm. it's the parking right or the trains are going to be available again. So we've also been trying to fish as far as that goes because, I mean, like Belinda says as well, I mean, that train that was in operations from Park Station through to Ellis Park was, uh, yeah, it was, it was brilliant. Um, I doubt whether it's going to be running this Saturday, but there are park and ride options from different shopping centers I've heard. 
There's obviously parking available at, at the Joburg Stadium at a cost of 50 rand a ticket. Um, but I think going forward, especially in big games like in the URC, for example, when we're hosting these big teams, and if it gets to knockout, they definitely need to get that mm. train operational. I mean, once you're in the stadium, you feel fine. But I mean, let's let's face it, it it's not in a safe area. And I think Lions Rugby and the and the stakeholders are trying their level best to make it as friendly as possible and safe as possible. But yeah, that train made a huge difference on that day. All right, guys, we've got a minute left, so I'm going to say goodbye. Thanks for everything, and good luck to you both. And Herbal Iceman Cooling Gel, the secret players. player on the rugby field.